it's time to talk about this. Is Into the Pit a canon game? Nah. Thanks very much, everyone. See you later. But wait, 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 wait. Don't click off the video yet, because there's actually a little bit more than that to unpack. You see, when Into the Pit was released, a lot of people didn't know how to take it. Is it part of the game's continuity? Is it not? Is it part of the book continuity? Is it even canon? Well, I'm here to break down what we're actually seeing for you and relate it back to not only the novels, but also back to the game's continuity. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts about Five Nights at Freddy's and watching a lot of videos about Five Nights at Freddy's. And honestly, I've come to the realization that there are a lot of people out there digging too deep. Yeah, I know, coming from me, that's pot kettle black. But honestly, I think if you use a little bit of Occam's razor, if you don't know what that is, Google it, it's actually pretty obvious what this game is, what it's designed to do, and where it sits in the canon. Number one is something that I thought was pretty obvious from the get-go, and that is that a lot of the game over screens and the introductory title screen to the game are set on TVs or at least screens. Does this mean that Into the Pit is an in-universe game? No, I don't think so. I don't think that Gregory is going up and playing this on an arcade machine. I mean, it's in its own little pocket universe. It is a game about Five Nights at Freddy's that exists in its own little portal over here, separate from the game's continuity. If anything, I'd put it in the same continuity as Fazbear Frights. However, they're in their own little pocket and there's nothing connecting those games to the actual game continuity. And the second thing is the time travel element. There's been a lot of debate whether the pit is physical time travel or whether it's memory or whether it's agony, but ultimately having no clarity on that almost pushes it back to once again being a story about Five Nights at Freddy's. With the amount of Easter eggs, Stitch Wraith, references to GGY, things like that in the game. When you combine that with the time travel anomaly, such as the door to the pizzeria being smashed in the past and the present, the rat in the past and the present, it doesn't actually line up. It doesn't really stack up neatly and it kind of folds in on itself with logic. And believe it or not, nothing else in Five Nights at Freddy's really does that. It doesn't step on its toes too much. Whereas Into the Pit is just take every Easter egg, throw it at the wall, and be done with it. And in doing so, it made it quite a meta experience. We're experiencing it as the player, as opposed to going to any deeper layers. And talking about meta, the third point, and one of the biggest points I have to raise, is that Scott didn't really intend for this to be a mainline game. Into the Pit was supposed to be a recreation of the Into the Pit novel, and it was going to be cartridge based only upon its release. It was just gonna be a little Easter egg bonus thing. But as time went on and uh, Mega Cat Studios kept working on it and it got better and better and bigger and bigger, it became a formal release. That to me is why I believe someone like Scott may have actually intervened and said, hey, can you create this screen, this start screen as a TV? Because I don't want it confused with the mainline games. I love Fazbear Frights and I love Into the Pit, but honestly, I put those two over here on their own little island. And what I mean by that is, are they canon? Yes. Are they in the game continuity? No. I believe that stories like this, and I even stretch this to Tales from the Pizzaplex, are designed to take themes, elements, relationships, and use those to inform the mainline story. And why would Scott be doing that? Why would he be so ambiguous? Well, because it's Scott. But honestly, I have a bigger theory at play to why Scott presents his information this way. Games one through six, he stated in Help Wanted One, were created by a rogue indie dev to discredit the actual events of the Fazbear Entertainment murders. Then you've got Fazbear Frights, which I believe were a book series released in universe. Once again, probably to make light of what happened and get people back on board with the brand. On a meta level, I believe Scott was trying to tell us a lot with Fazbear Frights, but there was so much conjecture, he decided to be a lot more clear in his presentation. Enter Tales from the Pizzaplex. I put these stories in the same vein as Fazbear Frights, 
However, he's a lot more direct, a lot more to the point, and he's making a lot more hard connections to the main story and the main timeline to really, you know, edge us along more than <laughs> he did with Baz Bear Frights. Even right back to the Silver Eyes, which he has stated is canon but not in continuity, there are so many similarities in story, in character, in thematics in those three novels that are now referenced in the games or we've seen presented in the games. But none of it's in the continuity, it's just canon. So he was really vague with the Silver Eyes, a little less vague with Fazbear Frights, and now he's pretty damn direct with Tales from the Pizzaplex, but I believe they are all in their own bubble universe to help us work out what actually happened. And the same with FNAF 1 through 6. I believe he's saying that these games were made by a rogue indie developer. If there's some information that's not quite right, the reason is we're to use those to inform the main story. And same with the movies. They are in their own pocket universe. We can use those themes, those interactions, those relationships to inform what has happened in the main story. But it's in its own universe. It is not in the continuity. So if nothing is canon, what is? Well, that is the theory I present to you. That there is a real world case of William Afton. There is a real world case of what actually happened and a real timeline and we have all these differing stories giving us pieces of information and pieces of lore and we're trying to work out what actually happened using third party information. It's not helpful but I believe that's how Scott is presenting the FNAF franchise and I believe it's what he's going to do moving forward. So where does Help Wanton Security Breach sit in all of this? Honestly I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to have to wait and see what happens when they release more and more games. But let me know in a comment below if you think I'm right or wrong or ugly or good looking. And hey, if you haven't seen my Into the Pit playthrough, check it out right here.